Welcome back. We're going to continue to talk about um, combustion reactions uh, and the, the chemistry of fuel combustion and so forth. We're going to try to take a look a little bit about the conversion of the mechanical energy, uh, sorry, conversion of the chemical energy and heat into mechanical energy a little bit. Let's take a look. Um, so before we get to that point, uh, this chart is very helpful to understand what's called the energy density of fuels. As I mentioned, you know, uh, methane may be very efficient in terms of the um, uh, energy per molar carbon, but it's hard to carry a lot of energy if you have to transport it as a gas. If you liquefy it, suddenly you can carry a lot more. So what you actually see here is uh, on, um, one axis, the energy content per unit volume and the energy content. And as you can see, uh, there, there are different advantages to um, uh, carrying to, to using compressed natural gas or hydrogen as fuel and stuff. And if you go to the website, this will give you some idea of um, looking at different transportation fuels and how they vary in terms of the energy content, uh, as energy density, and so forth. Okay. So to keep that in mind. The one thing I want to remind you also is that when I talked about gasoline and diesel, I talked about linear hydrocarbons. Um, you also find what are called aromatics. So these are um, uh, things with benzene rings, you may have seen. Uh, 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 structures that kind of go around and around, as it were. And some of the hydrocarbons are also branched, not linear hydrocarbons. So, for example, here's a benzene ring, for example, uh, and here is uh, another benzene ring with functionalities here. And so forth. So you will find these type of molecules also in gasoline, and they burn differently. But as you can see, they're primarily carbon and hydrogen with some uh, 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 hydroxyls, oxygen in some cases. And so um, typically, gasoline contains carbon and hydrogen compounds. They also contain additives. Some of the additives. Um, and these additives essentially are to make them burn more efficiently, more cleanly, and so forth. These are also carbon and hydrogen compounds are specifically tailored so that the combustion reaction is more efficient. Okay, Bezo, very similarly, they are um, linear, branched, aromatics, slightly higher molecular weight, C10, C15, and so forth. Um, so a quick comparison of gasoline and diesel. Gasoline, light hydrocarbons, uh, diesel, heavy hydrocarbons. The gasoline uh, the vapors need a spark in order to start burning. In diesel fuel, if you create the vapor, mix it with hot air, for example, it'll actually self-ignite. Completely different property, self-ignite property to real. That's the reason why you don't have um, spark plugs in diesel engines. Gasoline is made primarily from petroleum, crude oil, and, and uh, diesel on the other hand, of course, major, re major source of diesel is from petroleum, crude oil. But you can also imagine getting these higher uh, molecular hydrocarbons from other sources. Um, and so there are many, you might have heard about biodiesel and so forth. These are uh, petroleum-like diesel components, but from completely other sources. Um, very quick, a little bit of uh, physics and some math, as it were. So remember, I, I said earlier, um, what we have at gasoline and diesel engines is that you have a confined chamber where there is a combustion reaction creating energy. And therefore, a volume of the gas is increasing in volume, is made to increase its volume because the pressure increases rather suddenly. And so that increase in volume uh, or creates the energy to push pistons and therefore move the car, right? And so what you see here is different ways in which the pressure and volume relationship of that gas in the internal chamber can be, uh, can be, can be imagined. So there are different, these different engines that uh, are actually designed. And there is, for example, here in, the, in this particular, if you can imagine an engine, the pressure actually drops. As the pressure drops, because they say the gas is expanding and pushing the piston away, and then you could have another stroke, for example, where you have to retake some fuel back into your chamber and then burn them and so forth, right? But don't worry about the details except what this, these are the kind of uh, pressure volume relationships and so forth that are actually used to uh, understand the theoretical efficiencies of these uh, heat engines, as they're called. Because the car is ultimately a heat engine. The heat from combustion is changed into mechanical energy of the car. 
And so, as you can see, there's a difference in the way these two heat engines are. Um, here, uh, lines are vertical followed by uh, curved lines, and here there are curved lines followed by horizontal lines, and so forth. And, and don't worry about the details. So these are different types of engines that you can actually see. And so the mechanical engineer, along with chemical engineers, has to figure out what is the most efficient way of taking the mechanical uh, the chemical energy into mechanical energy for the car. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. This is a, a, a simple uh, um, uh, figure that shows uh, what's called uh, reminds us of something very, very important, and that is that is um, the second law of thermodynamics tells us what is the maximum amount of energy, mechanical energy we can actually get from, from heat. And what, what the second law of thermodynamics says is that the, the efficiency can never be 100%. I cannot convert all of the heat energy in my fuel into mechanical energy. There is a limit. And that limit is actually set by the temperature at which the combustion chamber works and the temperature of the exterior where some of the heat has to be released. So the higher the combustion temperature inside the chamber, the higher the efficiency of the heat engine. Right? So keep that in mind. That's very important. So one of the things that engineers try to do is, how do you burn the fuel at the highest temperature that is possible? Or if, when the energy is released, you keep the heat as much as possible in the chamber to convert that to mechanical energy. But of course, you realize that you know, if you have to burn heat, burn the fuel at a very high temperature, you need better materials. So the cost of the materials used to confine those gases in that chamber, of course, will go up. But an important relationship is that higher the combustion temperature, higher the thermal efficiency of the heat engine. Keep that in mind. Higher the pressure in the chamber, higher the thermal, uh, uh, mechanical efficiency of the uh, uh, automobile also. That's something to keep in mind. And the diesel engine operates at higher pressure, and therefore the efficiency tends to be higher. Um, and again, just a, a quick uh, review of the stuff. This is the uh, diesel engine type um, uh, heat engine. This is a gasoline type heat engine. And there are some equations that you might see some of that as part of the uh, problem sets as we move forward. Um, so if we put uh, uh, here, um, you'll be able to get some ideas to why diesel engine operates at uh, higher efficiency because of pressure, uh, which it runs at higher efficiency. So what we've, did, what we've done here is to a, a reminder of uh, the relationship between pressure and volume, um, the energy created by the combustion in the combustion chamber, translating that to mechanical energy and so forth, without a lot of the details. And you might, um, you, you, you'll get a sense of the uh, uh, energy efficiency and maybe miles per gallon calculation in some of the problem sets as you move forward.